Don Smith of Raw Materials. We're getting ready to deliver a coil of rock rebar over to a job where they're putting a concrete surface on top of an old wooden dock on, on salt water. Um, the crew that's doing it has used fiberglass rebar before, but they've never experienced rock rebar. So they, they've got it laid out now. They were short, 120 some feet. I'm taking them a coil that's been coiled for four years. Uh, to prove a point, uh, the discussion was, well, does the stuff take a set when it's, when it's stored that way? Answer, no. And I'm going to uncoil it in front of them to demonstrate that. Uh, they, the gentleman that's uh, running the job just called me, and I had mentioned to him that we produce a material called rock staples. Rock staples are the uh, continuous basalt fiber answer to fiberglass staples that have been used in fiber creek for years. The advantage to rock staples being made out of basalt fiber, uh, there's several. First off, it's a little bit heavier than fiberglass, which means you don't have the problem with them rising up to the surface when they're finished, because they have the same specific gravity as, as the Portland. Second, they don't tend to clump in the, in the mix. When I was developing rock rebar, and I was developing the, the coatings that go on the fibers themselves, and this is a piece of rock rebar, um, and I'm going to jump around here for a second. Rock rebar replaces this rusty steel. This is two and a half times stronger than this larger piece of rusty steel. At any rate, the, the fibers inside that, that, that form this rock rebar are this, pretty much the same as these uh, staples. And the coating that's on them, when I produce them for rock staples, causes them to disperse in the, in the Portland cement really well. A lot of the, uh, the, the concerns the guys have for putting um, uh, staples in, in the cement mixer is after they poured, a lot of times they've got it stuck all over the barrel. Basalt fibers of rock staples don't stick in the barrel. It's going to come out clean. We'll talk to the driver after they pump this. I'm going to, I decided I'm going to stay over there. I'm off today. So I'm just going to stay over there and watch this job happen. It's pretty close to the shop. Um, this is, this is 10 pounds. I, I would like them to put 80 pounds in. This is a 10 pound bag. The, the master bags, there's four of these, so there's 40 pounds in each one of, of the bags. Normally I would say put in 80 pounds at the bottom end. You can go more than that, but uh, at least 80 pounds. They want to tiptoe into it because they've never used it before. That's fine. It, it'll be better than nothing. This particular uh, slab uh, looks like it's 62 feet long. They're pouring it over an old, pretty dilapidated uh, wooden dock, hoping it holds up 43,000 pounds of concrete. And this uh, material is going to help it uh, from having cracks in it because they're not going to cut any expansion slots in it. 62 feet is a long way to go. I'm Don Smith, Raw Energy Materials. Um, as I mentioned in the last little segment, there were the rock staples. I'm taking some material over to a job where they're pouring uh, 10, 10 and a half yards of concrete on top of an old wooden dock, 62 foot uh, runs, and they have uh, agreed to try to use rock rebar. The gentlemen that are doing it have had some experience with FRP, which is fiberglass rebar, uh, in the past. Uh, in sticks, they were, I think the allure here was the fact that we could supply them rock rebar where it could be continuous runs with no splices. We're going to try to put this uh, dock in with no expansion or contraction cuts in it. So it's important that everything be continuous. They're short about 120 feet. Came to get a piece of uh, material that's long enough. And someone had asked me, well, what's that stuff do after it's been stored for a long time? I've come to the archive building where we keep a lot of the samples and things that we did during the development of it. This, uh, this particular piece is the, just took the label off of it. This was done 9-9 of 2009, so it is, is uh, well over four years old now. This is uh, 200 meters, which is 100 and, excuse me, 650 feet. This one weighs uh, 64.80 kg. It's about 140 pounds. I can pick it up. Um, there's uh, 650 feet here. This was done back before we did the really fancy ties to hold the material. It, it was just just uh, wire tied 
uh, with galvanized wire. It scared me a little bit, so I threw some electrician's wire on it back there. Never stand in front of the material. It, it is a spring. It, it, it wants to go straight. You're going to see when I uncoil this at the job site, it goes right back out to be, to be straight. Um, so be safe. When you want to do it, stand in the middle. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, lo and load this up. And, uh, They would have had to have had about seven 20-foot sticks to finish their job. Uh, even that would be marginal splices. This way can go in continuously. They'll just be able to uncoil what they need and, and uh, keep the rest so there's no waste. Like I said, you know, one man can handle it, put in a small pickup, deliver the job. You don't have to tie up the streets and tie up your big equipment. Doing this, I started to come get them just one little stick enough to finish their job. I want to coil this right here and then put it away and get some kind of idea of what happens. And obviously, this is a bigger coil because it's a scrap from another job, but you can see, you'll be able to see how it pops out and I'll shake it around a little bit so you can see how tenacious the material is. I'm just going to let it cut. I mean, that's as far as I can bend it with strength. The, the, that 12 millimeter that I opened up here a minute ago. That's it. Brent Corlin, a 650 foot roll of rock rebar. This has been coiled now for four years. I'm going to use it to finish off the job here and demonstrate that the material doesn't take a set. See what this says it weight wise. This one was uh, 64.80 kilos, so 130 pounds. I rolled it out here by myself. It's a 12 millimeter rock rebar. Okay, you always stand in the middle when you cut it because it does not want to be coiled. C clamps I just drop over it just to keep it from getting those getting away. Whoop. See that hit there's where it starts getting interesting. Um, How many grab the end and pull it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you really should put some gloves on. Is it set on the barbecue grill? Uh, here, we take the end of this. Stuff is going to go straight. Basically, the clamps are supposed to keep it from flipping up over the top. Whoop! The theoretically. Hang on, Dave. Hang on, D. 
No, I got it now. All right. All right, I'm going to clamp it off. We're going to go on with our... Uh, well, I'll get one more, one more loop. Now, this is why you should wear jeans. I caught that on my shoe, but it would definitely scratch it. This is quartz, not sand. Quartz is the only one that can the pressure. This is an existing dock, and rather than replace it in wood again, the stringers are still good underneath it. I decided to use this for the bottom form and pour four inches of concrete on it. Since ultimately this wood's going to rot out from under the bottom, we're going to leave it hanging on the footer for this, this wall, which I'll show you in a second. We've exposed the seawall down below it. We're going to put some dowels in, in the seawall tie it to the to slab, but we're only tying it in on top of the, of the uh, T-piles. Then there's this dock has three batter piles, which were laid up at an angle to prevent the seawall from being pushed out. We're tying, that, tying those in. The you guys are poking holes in the form on the outside to hold the rebar an inch up from the bottom, from the bottom of the pour will be. We want it on the bottom of the pour since this is going to be hanging off the pilings and hanging off the wall. We want it so that when it sags, the rebar goes in tension. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's going to be exposed out completely through the pour because we don't have to worry about rust. This will never ever rust. This material is all two and a half times stronger than steel. Yeah, I got to stop and drill these things out because they're. The holes are not lined up properly. If that's a problem, here's a drill. Right? Notice how it, where they're walking, it's coming right up. I'll use this part on the on the website to show how it comes up. Look at that, Carl. You put something there. It looks like that fish is chasing some bait. <laughs> there another one sitting right, just hanging right on the top there. See when I wiggle it, rotate it. I just slid this piece of 16 millimeter, number five, right into the into the mix and didn't disturb it, and it doesn't sink. I see it moving there. Yeah, nothing moving. Video the underside of this. This is the old dock, and where we put the forms on it. I'm down here to see how much it's sagging because they're putting 43,000 pounds of concrete on top of it. What do you notice about those fibers? Anything? Uh, they stay down better than the other ones. Hopefully that's the case. They're heavier and we put a uh, agent on it to keep them from sticking together and make them disperse out into the into the mix better so if it's working you're the judge yeah you can't really can't really notice them when you're trialing the surface usually Next. when you're hitting it the other ones will be coming up on the surface you'll see them you don't really see them right now excellent any observations about the staples the fiber He's intense. Yeah, if I wouldn't have been here, I swear you ain't have none in here. Can't, I can't see it. Excellent. It's working. There's 40, 40 pounds in it in uh, 10 yards.
make note of it. I'm, it except constructive criticism, that's how we improve it. I've been working on it for eight years to get it what the stuff is now. Hard to make a new material that's better than what's out there and you can still make a living off of, you know?